welcome to my channel, Andra Makes. Today I am super duper excited to share with you what I made for the Sew Mashup Challenge. And the Sew Mashup Challenge is an Instagram challenge for the month of July, and it's being hosted by Sally from Secret Life of a Seamstress and Kath, Kath Craft, and I will put their YouTube channels in the description box and also their Instagram accounts in the description box also, so be sure and check those out. They have lots of details on their YouTube channel about the challenge and also sharing lots of inspo and things like that. But this challenge is right up my alley. And the premise of the challenge is to use at least two different sewing patterns, maybe the bodice from one and the skirt from another, or anything, any combo you can think of to come up with a whole new garment using at least two different sewing patterns. And this is right up my alley. I have done this several times and I wanted to share with you a few that I have done to maybe encourage and inspire you to join. And the way to enter the challenge is, and I'll put the graphic right here, is to use at least two different sewing patterns to make a new garment during the month of July and post your make by July 31st on Instagram, tagging Kath and Sally and using the hashtag sew mashup and you can see all the details right there so i hope you'll consider joining mashing up patterns is so much fun and the ones that i have done thus far are i have combined the top of c and sew 6685 and you can see the picture right there and i used that top and then i combined it with the skirt portion of the bateen dress by Tilly and the Buttons. And you can see that right there. And that was actually a refashion because I had made the bateen dress as is, but the bodice was too small. So I removed that bodice and then added this top and made this dress that you can see in the picture right here. So that was super fun. And then here are some more I've done. And the next three, I have used the bodice from the Leto t-shirt dress by Seamwork, and I need to thank my good buddy Michelle from Michelle Sews Again for introducing me to the Leto. I've never made the dress as is, but that bodice is one of my TNTs. I love it. I love the fit, and I have used that bodice three times for three different mashups, and the first two I'm going to show you, I actually have a video dedicated to those refashions. And the first one is I used the Leto bodice and I, as you can see right here, and I attached it to the skirt from McCall's 7313. And that was a refashion because I wasn't happy with the original bodice from that McCall's dress. So I put those two together and I'm so happy with that. And then the next one I did, I used the Leto bodice again and I attached it to the skirt from McCall's 8193 and you can see that right there. I love it so much more than the original dress and check out that video if you're interested in seeing all the details about those two refashions. And then in the next picture I combined the Leto bodice with a self-drafted tiered skirt and you can see that right there. So fun. It's really fun to play around with different patterns, mixing and matching. So I hope you will give it a try. And then I think my most favorite one that I've ever done is I combined the bodice from McCall's 7991 and I attached it to Butterick 6585, those pants, and I made a jumpsuit. And that is a Sirocco inspired jumpsuit. And I am so pleased with how that came out. And I do want to do this again. I really love that look. And that jumpsuit is so comfy. And the dress I made for the Sew Mashup Challenge, I'm going to be showing it to you up close on a hanger. And I will insert pictures of me wearing it. And then I will try it on for you. And I'm so pleased with how it turned out. And when I learned about the challenge, I started going through my pattern stash, as you do, to see what two patterns I could combine. And I actually used four patterns. 
I used the bodice from one pattern, the skirt from another pattern, the pockets from another pattern, and the waist ties from another pattern. And I'm going to show you the patterns that I used. The bodice pattern I used is from Butterick 6486. And I used the bodice from View A. And as you can see, most of the work was already done for me because it has this little peplum, if you will, gathered into the top bodice. So the top bodice is already ready for something to be gathered into it. I adore this pattern. It comes with the option for trim, but I didn't do that. But it has these fabulous bell sleeves, which I love. And then there's no closures or anything. You just slip this on over your head. But I do want to say about this pattern, I had all my pattern pieces cut out and opened up the instructions and was ready to sew and realized that they want you to French seam all the seams on this. And I'm like, why so serious? That's a no from me. As my good friend Talisha from Creativity by T says, I'm not here for that. That's why I have a serger. I think a serged finished edge is just fine for me, but I thought that was so unusual of all the big four patterns I have ever sewn, and I've sewn a ton. I've never seen them ask for French seams, especially something, I mean, this is just a simple top, but I thought that was so unusual. Now, I've never sewn a Vogue pattern. I'm sure they want you to do French seams, but let me know if you have run across that much with big four patterns. I just thought that was so interesting. But needless to say, I did not do French seams. I just did regular seams and surged them with my serger and it looks just fine. But I used this bodice pattern and the skirt I used is Simplicity 7173. And I've already made this dress, and I will put a picture in of it right here. And as you can see, I'm having a little bit of fun with the pattern envelope cover. But here it is. And this was the view I made. And this was the winner of my viewer's choice for July of last year, I believe. I love this dress. It's one of my favorite dresses I've ever made. It was my birthday dress last year. And this pattern is from, I think, 1995, somewhere in that era. But the dress itself, when I made it, it was just a little bit oversized. So I added a piece of elastic in the back to bring it in a little. So that's why I decided I would probably need waist ties. So the waist ties I used are from this pattern and it's Simplicity 8689. And you're going to see a video coming soon. I made this dress. And it'll be up in a couple weeks, but I used the waist ties from this. And then if you remember the pockets from this skirt, they're patch pockets on the front. And the fabric I used, I didn't want to put patch pockets on the front because it's too beautiful. So I wanted side seam pockets. So I used the pocket pattern from Simplicity 9454. And I have a pattern review for this on my channel. I believe it went up last week, so I'll put a link to it in the description box as well. I just used the pocket pattern from this pattern. And I'm getting ready to show you my dress, but I wanted to let you know that the fabric I used for the sleeves and the skirt is fabric that was given to me by my friend whose mother was an amazing seamstress and who had passed away. And my friend contacted me and asked me if I would like to have the garment fabric. I told her I would be honored. If you saw my Ruby overalls pattern review, I talked about that also there. And the fabric that I'm using for the skirt and the sleeve and the dress I just made is part of that fabric. And my friend told me that all that fabric that she gave me is probably from the 60s to the 80s, anywhere in that time frame. Okay, so here's my dress. Here it is. This red fabric is a linen look fabric that I got from Joanne, and this was left over from the tiered skirt that I, the picture that I showed earlier with the red and yellow and turquoise tiers. 
then I had this left over in my stash and then this amazing fabric was what was given to me by my friend and it belonged to her mother and I this has some linen in it it's some sort of linen blend it's absolutely gorgeous and I'll get in close and it has these beautiful embroidered red flowers on it absolutely gorgeous and then here are those very pretty bell sleeves which I love a lot and I did a rolled hem on those instead of doing a traditional hem I thought that was so pretty and I put my handmade in Tennessee label on there and then I did take my time and fussy cut the sleeves and I had the center of the sleeve I fussy cut it so those would be going straight down the center and then this side as well the sleeves match pretty good if I do say so myself I'm very proud of that and then here's the back you can see they match pretty well there and then there's the waist ties and then the skirt and I did do a contrast stitching for the hem I used red thread I thought that was pretty but as you can see I used the bodice from that Butterick pattern and the skirt from the simplicity pattern from the 90s and then the ties of course from that other pattern in the pockets there are the pockets and I made this beautiful dress so now I'm going to go try it on for you but in the meantime here are some pictures of me wearing it Love these beautiful bell sleeves so pretty and then the sleeves that I fussy cut have the flowers going down the center of the shoulder and there's the other one and now I'll get up on the steps so you can see the entire thing here it is so fun in the pockets and now here's the back can see the tie there that I added so that is my dress for the sew mash up challenge let me know what you think I hope you like it thanks so much for watching see you next time bye